Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is the week one wrap up for March Mystery Madness. Now it was a short week, it was just the four days. So I am, I only have three books to talk about. The first one is one I read for NetGalley. I received um, Kitty Lumsden's new book, The Secrets of Hartwood Hall. So thank you very much to NetGalley and the publishers for giving me early access to that book. First, I just need to say, I'm super proud of Katie. You know, it takes a lot to, to write a book and then to, to put it out there. And so I'm really proud of her. Um, this is the story of a widowed woman who goes to Hartwood Hall to be the governess for the 10 year old boy there. There is a lot of mysterious things happening. There's an entire wing of the house that she is not allowed to go into. She, you know, there's weird things happening. It's very mysterious and kind of gothic-y. Um, and you can really see Katie's love of Victorian novels flow through this whole book. There were, you know, elements of so many different books that I could see as influences in her story. It was very well written. I have to say it was very well written. Well done, well done, Katie. Um, however, I do have to say it wasn't the book for me, ultimately. Um, I didn't really like the direction that the story took. And so that's too bad that it wasn't the book for me, but it was very well written. And I liked the gothic -y, mysterious elements. So well done, Katie, for, uh, for writing a book and getting it out there in the world, The Secrets of Hartwood Hall. Okay, and then I read a, the, a Picture of Murder by T.E. Kinsey. This is number four, I want to say. Yes, in the Lady Hardcastle series. This is late October 1909. If I had known that, you know, I could have tried to... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, schedule my reading of this series so that I actually read it in that time because it would have been really atmospheric but that's okay I really did enjoy it I love this series Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo get asked to um, host last minute for film types as they're called um, a, a producer and three actors are coming to the village that they're um, Lady Farley Stroud is putting on a film festival and these four are coming to the village to show their film, the producer, the director, and three of the actors. Um, and so that part was great because it was so interesting to learn about what film movies were like in 1909. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, they, whoever was running the film had to crank it the whole time. So you had to maintain a steady speed so that things didn't speed up or slow down and get weird, right? Um, it was silent, there was no, there was no um, talking in the film. So, um, and actually the director narrated the story as the film was shown. And apparently by 1909, this was something that had already gone out of fashion. I don't know at what point they started putting words on the screen to explain the story, but that hadn't been happening yet. But so he, he still narrated it and in their small village near Bristol, they really enjoyed that. So it was really, and it was like 10 minutes long. The film was 10 minutes long. So that was great. Um, so yeah. And then one of the actors in this troupe is found dead. And then the story continues from there. I really did enjoy this one. I thought it was great. The mystery was really complex. I, I, I honestly, I had an inkling, but I definitely, I can't say that I solved it. I had an inkling of where it was going, but it was awesome. I loved it. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to keep going in this series. And then, <clears throat> I read A Calamitous Chinese Killing by Shimini Flint. This is the book that I chose for round one of my M&M game. And in this, um, in this one in the series, Inspector Singh gets sent to China because the son of the first secretary at the embassy in Be Beijing 
um, the first Singapore Singaporean secretary um, at the Singapore embassy. Um, her son is is killed, and the police investigated, and then they said we think that it was just um, in in the course of a robbery he got killed. And she did not believe that that's the truth of what was going on. And so Inspector Singh gets sent over to investigate. I really loved this. I thought it was very well written. There were some really, really interesting pieces about um, kind of what the new China is like and how in certain, certain elements it's not that different. Um, and yet it's very capitalistic and like it was, yeah, it was really, really interesting. Um, I loved it. I gave it four and a half stars. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> and then I did mark one thing here that I wanted to quote. <clears throat> Singh was back in the limousine with the blacked out windows, grateful for Benson's smooth driving and the air conditioning. It was like being shoved in the fridge after being stir fried in a hot walk. Going door to door down those narrow streets had left him melting like an ice cream. Singh paused to wonder why all his mental metaphors were food related and then decided it was likely because it was getting close to tea time. <laughs> so there you have it. This is A Calamitous Chinese Killing by Shimini Flint and I really did enjoy it. So there you have it. Those are the first three books that I have read for March Mystery Madness. I'm counting the secrets of Hartwood Hall because it's it's got mysterious elements and it's gothic-y, even though it's technically not a mystery, but, um, but I read it. So, um, there you have it. Have you read any of these books? Let's chat in the comment section down below, and I will see you for another video soon.